Hello, and welcome to this video on geometric sequences. Today we'll explore how to find a term in a geometric sequence using a formula. We'll also learn how to find the sum of a specific number of terms in a geometric sequence. Before we dive in, let's review a few things. First, a sequence is an ordered set of numbers with a pattern. The pattern helps us predict what each term might be. For example, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 are a sequence. A term is an individual expression or number in the sequence. A geometric sequence is a special type of sequence. Each term is a fixed multiple of the number that comes before it. For example, let's say my first number is 2, and I multiply 2 by 5 to get 10. Then I multiply 10 by 5 to get 50. I can multiply 50 by 5 to get 250, and so on. 2, 10, 50, 250. In geometric sequences, we use multiplication to find each subsequent term. The number we multiply by is called the common ratio. Each term gets multiplied by the common ratio, resulting in the next term in the sequence. In this geometric sequence, the common ratio is 5. To find any number in a given sequence, we can use the following formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. In this formula, n stands for the number in the sequence we are asked to find. a sub 1 stands for the first term in the sequence, and r stands for the common ratio. Let's look at how we can use this formula. Given the geometric sequence, 10, 30, 90, 270, and so on, we can see that the common ratio, or r, equals 3 because each time we're multiplying by three. 10 times three is 30, 30 times three is 90, 90 times three is 270, and so on and so forth. Let's use our formula to find the sixth term in this sequence. Since we need to identify the sixth term, we can replace the variable n with six. Remember that a sub one always stands for the first term in our sequence. In this case, the first term is 10. Let's rewrite the formula and replace the variables with the numbers that they represent. So we're looking for the sixth term, so a sub 6 equals a sub 1, which is 10, times r, 3, to the 6 minus 1. Now that we've replaced the variables with numbers, we can solve the equation using the order of operations. First, we need to simplify the exponents. Since 6 minus 1 equals 5, we can rewrite the equation using one exponent a sub 6 equals 10 times 3 to the 5th. Next, we can solve 3 to the 5th, or 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which equals 243. So a sub 6 equals 10 times 243. Finally, we can multiply 10 times 243 to get our final answer. So our sixth term in our sequence is 2430. A geometric series is the sum of all terms in a geometric sequence. Let's consider the last sequence we looked at, which was 10, 30, 90, 270, and so on. As a geometric series, this is written as 10 plus 30 plus 90 plus 270, and so on. To find the sum of a specific number of terms in a geometric sequence, we can use this formula. In this formula, n stands for the number of terms added together. Like the first formula we learned about, a sub 1 stands for the first term in the sequence, and r stands for the common ratio. Let's walk through an example together. Using the same geometric sequence as our last example, let's find the sum of the first eight terms. 10, 30, 90, 270, and so on. Using this sequence and the formula s sub n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, let's consider what each variable can be replaced with. Remember that n stands for the number of terms. Since we are looking for the sum of the first eight terms, we can substitute eight for n. a sub one stands for the first term in the sequence, which is 10. Recall that r stands for the common ratio. The common ratio is three, so we can substitute r with three in our formula. Now let's rewrite the equation and replace the variables with the numbers they represent. So s sub eight is equal to 10 
times 1 minus 3 to the 8th over 1 minus 3. Now that we replace the variables with numbers, we can solve the equation using the order of operations. First, we need to simplify the exponents. Since 3 to the 8th equals 6,561, we can rewrite the equation using this product. S of 8 equals 10 times 1 minus 6,561 over 1 minus 3. Next, we can simplify the parentheses. Since 1 minus 6,561 equals negative 6,560, we can rewrite the equation again. Now we can simplify the numerator and denominator. S of 8 equals 10 times negative 6,560 is negative 65,600, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And to get our final answer, we just divide. Negative 65,600 divided by negative 2 is equal to 32,800. So the sum of our eight terms is 32,000. 800. Geometric sequences are patterns, and patterns are all around us. Knowing how they work will help you identify and use them in the real world. For example, let's say you want to share a YouTube video with friends. You might start by messaging two friends about this. In your message, you might ask each friend to share the video with four other friends. That would mean eight people were messaged, since two times four equals eight. If each of those people shares with four more people, then how many people would have seen the video? 32, because 8 times 4 equals 32. As you can see, we have a geometric pattern. 2, 8, 32, and so on. The common ratio is 4 since each person is asked to share the video with 4 friends. Let's find out how many people received the YouTube video after 8 rounds of messaging, including the original message shared with 2 friends. To solve this problem, we need to know the sum of the first 8 terms in the sequence. Remember which formula can help us find the sum. Our sum formula is s sub n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Using information from the problem, let's replace variables with the numbers they represent. n equals 8 because we are finding the sum of the first 8 terms in the sequence. a sub 1 equals 2 since the first number in the sequence is 2. And r equals 4 because the common ratio is 4. So we're going to substitute in our variables. From here, we can solve the equations using the order of operations. First, we need to simplify the exponent inside the parentheses. Since 4 to the 8th equals 65,536, we can rewrite the equation without an exponent. From here, we can solve the expression in parentheses. 1 minus 65,536 equals negative 65,535, so we can rewrite the equation again. Next, we can simplify the numerator and denominator. 2 times negative 65,535 equals negative 131,070, and 1 minus 4 equals negative 3. Finally, we divide to solve. Negative 131,070 divided by negative 3 equals 43,690. Therefore, 43,690 people received the YouTube video after 8 rounds of messaging. Let's try another problem together. Let's say that Ann's Club is selling cookies online. They sell 4 boxes on day 1. Their goal for each day is to double the amount sold on the previous day. At this rate, how many boxes will they sell on day 10? In this problem, we need to find the 10th term in the geometric sequence described. Let's start by identifying what we know from the problem. Since four boxes are sold on day one, that's the first number in our sequence. If their goal is to double, that means that each subsequent term needs to be multiplied by two. We can use the first formula we learned to solve this problem. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Let's replace the variables with our corresponding numbers. 
n equals 10 since we need to find the 10th term in this sequence, and a sub 1 equals 4, which is the first number in the sequence, and r equals 2 because their goal is to double the previous day's sales. Now that the variables are replaced, we can solve the equation. First, we simplify our exponents. Since 10 minus 1 equals 9, we can rewrite the equation using the exponent 9. Next, we can rewrite the exponent term. 2 to the 9th equals 512, so we can rewrite the equation using 512. Finally, we multiply to solve. 4 times 512 equals 2048. At their current rate, Anne's Club will sell 2,048 boxes of cookies on day 10. I have one last problem for you to try on your own. It combines everything we've learned in this video so it's a little more challenging, but I know you can handle it. Malik opened a bank account in January with $10. Each month he plans to double the amount deposited in the previous month. Based on this information, how much money will Malik deposit in September? And assuming he doesn't spend any of the deposited money, how much will Malik have at the end of the year? This problem asks two questions. Let's start with the first. How much money does Malik plan to deposit in September? See if you can try this part on your own. Pause the video here. When you're done, press play and check your work. We can use the sequences formula to identify Malik's deposit amount in September. Since he makes monthly deposits, this would be his ninth deposit. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That's the formula we're going to use to solve this problem. And n equals 9, since September is the ninth month of the year. r equals 2, because the sequence doubles each month. And a sub 1 equals 10, because Malik's first deposit was 10. Now that we've replaced our variables, we're ready to solve the equation. First, we'll simplify our exponents. Since 9 minus 1 equals 8, we can rewrite the equation using the exponent 8. Next, we can rewrite the exponent term. 2 to the 8th equals 256, so we can rewrite the equation using 256. Finally, we multiply to solve. 10 times 256 equals 2,560. Malik plans to deposit $2,560 in September. Let's move on to the second question. How much money will Malik have at the end of the year? Pause the video and try to solve this on your own. When you're done, press play and check your work. We can use the series formula to find the total amount of money Malik plans to deposit. S sub n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. First, we can replace our variables with numbers from the problem. Since we are looking for the total amount deposited after 12 months, n equals 12. We know that a sub 1 equals 10 because Malik's first deposit was $10. And we know that r equals 2 because our sequence doubles each month. Next, we can simplify the exponent. Since 2 to the 12th equals 4096, we can rewrite the equation. Now we can solve the expression in parentheses. 1 minus 4096 is negative 4095, so we can rewrite the equation again. Our next step is to simplify the numerator and denominator. 10 times negative 4095 equals negative 40,950, and 1 minus 2 equals negative 1. Finally, we can divide to solve. Malik will deposit $40,950 by the end of the year. I hope this video on geometric sequences was helpful. Thanks for watching and happy studying.